Wow guys, Lightroom 12 with the new mask features and tools has recently blown my mind. It has enabled me to get incredible results with just a few easy steps using their AI mask abilities. In this video, I will show you the whole process of how I edited this image to get this stunning result. But first, let's break down the mask and tools in steps and see just how powerful Lightroom 12 can be. This photo has already been edited with my chocolate sunset preset and added a bit of a netting but what I want to show you in this video is how I use the radial filter as a mask and then use the subtract tool to make it very realistic. So I go to masks, click on radial filter, take a nice big one, drag it nice and big, then I use dehaze normally like that add a bit of warmth add a bit of tint like that and then i go to the mask i click on it i use subtract i take object and i brush on my subject or object so that it will be subtracted from that radial mask there we go boom so you can see radial with and without. The thing I want to show you guys in this photo is people select. So you go to mask again, go to plus, select people, wait a bit. It does sometimes, depending on the speed of your PC, take a while. You can either select the entire person or you can actually like face, body skin, eyebrows, anything else you want to choose here. You can choose for this example, I'm going to use face skin and body skin and I'm going to say create mask. For this, what I want to do is again, use the subtract, go to subtract. This time I'm going to use a brush. I'm going to make my brush quite a bit smaller. I'm going to zoom in and I want to brush the eyes because I want to subtract it. I want detail on the eyes. I don't want it to be softened because we're going to do a bit of skin softening here. So do it on the eyebrows as well. Definitely on the lips as well. Like that. And I'm going to do the ears because I do not want any blur on the ears. Then I'm going to zoom out. We're going to just do clarity. Now, be careful with this, guys. It can easily look fake or plastic. You need to be careful with this, and you can do that. The other thing you can do is sort of a dodge and burn as well. You can bring up the highlights a bit on the face if there's nice highlights, and bring down the shadows just to bring in some detail. With this image, what I want to show you guys is the cloning tool and how powerful it has become with the new Lightroom 12 features. Um, I've already edited the image. There's a radial filter here at the top, which you can see through the masking. Um, but let's use the cloning tool. You can either go up here to cloning or healing, or you can press the Q button. And I'm going to go over this little area here because I don't like that. It doesn't add to the image for me. See how that does it. It does it quite well. Let's maybe use the old fashioned Lightroom way of doing it and see if it does a better job. And it did. And then we're going to go down here. Do that and there and do that. And I think that looks absolutely amazing. I don't like this area. I'm going to go to content aware and just do one click there and it's gone. So one of the things I see people overdoing quite a bit in the new Lightroom is the sky feature and they overcook the sky completely and it just looks fake. But I've got a way to actually make it better. So I'm going to overcook this one. I'm going to draw down the exposure too much as well as the highlights to show you guys what I mean by this. You can see there's like a line or something that's happening on the horizon there, which is really not nice. Now to fix that, you click on the mask again, you go to subtract, you go to linear gradient, and you're going to pull this linear gradient quite a bit up like that. And then you can decide on where you sort of want to position it to make it look nice and realistic. I think over there is great. And then you can decide to maybe, you know, up the exposure again of the sky and play around with it like that. This photo, I'm gonna show you why I don't actually use people and why I use the object tool more than the people selection. But first, let's do the sky. Let's get a, a linear filter here from the, from the right because it's a bit um, on the bright side for me, I think. We'll start off with the sky, click on mask, click on sky. Um, we're going to bring the sky down quite a bit 
um, and maybe fix it a bit later, make it less obvious. For now, we're gonna add another one. We're gonna go linear. I wanna go on this side. We're gonna down the exposure on the right hand side a bit. We can up the shadows a bit because this area is getting dark a bit. There we go. And now we're gonna go again, another mask and we go object. Now, we all know that the pupil selection is very slow, but look how fast object is when you select an object. The only thing I will have to do, however, is go to minus, I use a little brush and I go into this area here and I just go minus on that area there. Now I'm gonna take exposure, I'm gonna up it on the couple quite a bit because the sky for me is a bit on the dark side and a bit unrealistic. I quite like that. What we can do maybe to the sky is what we did in that other photo is bring in a linear gradient. Just bring it in like that. I think that looks absolutely spectacular. And we might add some contrast and open up the shadows of the image a bit. And there we have it. As promised, I'm gonna show you how to get from this to this result in a few easy steps. So with a masking tool, sometimes you have to work it into reverse, if that makes sense, but I'll show you. So let's add my KT preset to this photo. We'll open up the shadows a bit, up the exposure slightly. Now I'm gonna go to the sky, but I don't wanna work on the sky, I wanna work on the foreground. So this is where that reverse comes in and I go invert. And for that invert, I'm gonna go shadows, open up the shadows quite a bit, open up the exposure a bit. And then I think before we go on, let's add a bit of warmth to this image. I'm actually gonna select the sky. So go another mask, click on select sky, drop it quite a bit. Also add a bit of dehaze to get some detail in there. And then I'm gonna add a object. Now watch this guys. Create the object on the couple but I don't want to work on the couple. I want to work on the background, but I know, don't want to work on the whole background. I just want to work on the land and the sea. So now I'm going to go inverse, all right? But I'm just going to say deselect sky. So now it's no sky, no couple, and we can work on the ocean and everything that matters. So I'm going to add a bit of contrast to make the water come alive a bit. We can add a bit of clarity to the foreground, the background. And the next one I wanna do is I see a bit of brightness here, a streak of brightness here. I'm gonna add another brush, add a brush, make it a bit bigger, and just do one single stroke of brush over here. And then um, go to the exposure, bring it down slightly. And we can even add a bit of contrast there. There we go. We can close the masks for now, add a bit of that. And the very last thing I wanna do is now again, select the couple. I'm gonna do object select again, because it's just so much faster. There we go. And we can just up the exposure on the couple slightly. And now we can play with a bit of grading if we wanna maybe add a bit of saturation there we go, and I think that looks great. I hope you enjoyed this video and that masks will help you to make your photos pop. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.